You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is force diagrams. And there's two questions we wish to answer in this video. What is a force diagram? And what type of information do force diagrams communicate? Let's get started. To begin, let's talk about force. Force is a vector quantity. When saying that force is a vector quantity, what we mean, like any vector, is it's a quantity that has a magnitude in a direction. When it comes to the magnitude of the force, or the strength of the force, we're referring to the numerical value associated with the force, usually expressed in a unit known as the Newton and abbreviated with the letter N. When we speak about the direction of the force vector, we're talking about it being directed to the right or to the left, or up or down or eastward or westward. All of these are adjectives describing the direction of the force. Now when we talk about a force diagram, what we're doing is we're representing all information about all the individual forces that are acting upon the object. Here you see a picture of a force diagram. You'll notice that there are four arrows attached to the object. Each one of these arrows represents a force. The arrows have a specific length, and the length of the arrow is indicative of the strength or magnitude of the force. And each arrow has a specific direction, and the direction is in the direction of the force. So when we see a long arrow to the right, what that tells us is there's a strong force to the right. And a short arrow to the left means there's a weaker force to the left. This is what we call a force diagram. But before we go further, we've got to be careful about this because there's no universally accepted idea regarding what a force diagram really is. One teacher's force diagram can look different than another teacher's force diagram. Some teachers may not use a force diagram at all, may use something called a free body diagram. We'll talk about that in a moment. So you have to be aware and kind of tuned in to your own teacher's use of the phrase force diagram. Regardless of how they use it or what they mean when they use it, one thing's for certain. It gives us information about the, about the magnitude and direction of the individual forces acting upon an object. There are varying types of force diagrams, but all types of force diagrams always use these vector arrows to commu communicate information about the individual forces acting on an object. Here we see a, a, a force diagram with three arrows indicating that there are three forces, but you could have four arrows for four forces or two arrows for two forces. The arrows going up and down may be the same size or they may not be the same size. What is important is that you're, re you're revealing information about the strength and direction of the forces acting upon an object. Sometimes we actually include information about the strength of the force in the terms of a number. Here we see the force values written in terms of the newtons of force. Sometimes we put symbols next to the arrows in our force diagram to indicate the type of force. So we could have a friction force or a tension force or a normal force or a gravity force. If those don't mean anything to you now, they will very soon. And sometimes we can put little gradations or markings upon our force arrows, something like this, and that would indicate um, that the, the up forces of the same strength as the down force. And sometimes we can even put uh, a combination of these things on our forces, like we can put symbols and numbers. So whatever we do to our force diagram, one thing's for certain, and that is that the length of each one of these arrows tells us something about the strength of the force, and the direction of the arrow tells us something about the direction of the force. Now that we know what a force diagram is and what one looks like, let's talk about how you interpret force diagrams. As you begin to interpret force diagrams, the most important information to get out of the diagram is the de determination as to whether or not the individual forces are balanced or unbalanced. And we see examples of both here with the balanced force situation being on the left and the unbalanced being up on the right. This is a critical question because the manner in which an object moves is determined by whether or not the individual forces are balanced or unbalanced. So let's begin with balance forces. What do we mean when we say the forces are balanced? Well, what we mean is that every force on the diagram has an opposing force that is of the same strength. So if you look here, you see the 25 newtons up has an opposite or opposing force of 25 newtons down, and the 15 newtons to the right is opposed by a leftward force of 15 newtons. So opposing forces balance each other out. Here's another instance of 25 newtons up and 25 newtons down, just two forces, but they happen to be balanced. And here's an example of a situation with three forces, one which is 30 newtons down, and two more that are upwards of 15 newtons each. When added together, these two 15 newtons up force 
balance out the 130 Newton downforce. So when we speak of objects having balance forces, what we mean is the effect of, of a single force is always counteracted by the effect of two, one or more other forces acting upon the object in such a manner that all of the forces are said to cancel out or balance out. So what do we mean by unbalanced forces? Forces are said to be unbalanced when other, whenever one or more of the individual forces acting on the object is not counteracted by another force. Like here in this diagram, what you notice is there's 25 newtons up and 25 newtons down, and they do balance. But then there's a 25 newtons to the right, which is not balanced by the 15 newtons to the left. We would say there's an unbalanced force with 10 newtons extra force directed off to the right. Here's another situation with 25 newtons down, and 15 newtons up. And in this situation, we have to say that the downward force is not balanced by the upward force. If there's an extra 10 newtons of force directed downwards, that's the unbalanced force. And this is an unbalanced force situation. And finally, here's a situation with a 15 newton leftward force that's not balanced by anything to the rightward force, to the right. Even though the ups and down balance, there's nothing to balance the left. There's 15 newtons of force remaining unbalanced. Whenever we have these situations with an unbalanced force, we say that there's a net force that is acted upon the object. There's an F net, or unbalanced force, acting on the object. So the net force is the result of adding all the individual forces as vectors. It's sometimes called the vector sum of all the forces. Like any force, it's going to have a magnitude and it's going to have a direction. So when we look at this diagram, if we were to compute the net force, we'd notice that the 30 newtons up and 30 newtons down balance each other out, but there's no balance in the horizontal direction. There's 35 newtons to the right and 20 newtons to the left, so overall there's a net force of 15 newtons directed rightwards. The way I like to encourage students to think about this is to think of the force diagram as depicting a tug of war. And in that tug of war, you have a winner and you have a winning margin. The winner here is the rightward force, and the winning margin is 15 newtons. So a net force of 15 newtons to the right tells you who won the tug-of-war forces and tells you by how much they won the tug-of-war. Well, we've done it. We've come to the end, and we now know what a force diagram is, and we know the types of information that force diagrams communicate to us. So now that it's over, I'd like to give you an action plan to help you out. But before I do, could you help us out a little bit? If you like the video, why don't you click on the like button down below? And why don't you click on the subscribe button while you're at it? Once you subscribe to our channel, uh, tap on the bell, and you'll get notifications when new videos come out. Finally, we'd love to hear from you. If you could leave a question or a comment in the comment section down below, we love it. Thanks. Now, here's the action plan. First of all, we're associated with a website known as, the, known as the physicsclassroom.com, and you'll find a lot of help there, and practice too. So we'd like to, to encourage you to go to our concept builder section, go to the Newton's Laws area, and you might, might benefit from doing the balance versus unbalanced force concept builder in that section of our website. And if you need a reference, there's always the Physics Classroom tutorial. It's kind of like the written version of these video tutorials. And if you go to the Newton's Laws chapter, Lesson 1 is a great way to reinforce what we've talked about in this video and some of the other videos that came before or immediately after. And then finally, why don't you continue listening to our channel? We're just getting started here on Newton's Laws. This is the second of several videos, and I hope you can continue listening. Thank you. Good luck to you.